Two, three, four. Run up your engine! RV rentals are up 650% because Americans are planning socially distant summer vacations. Think about it. You got your family in your house? Well, rent a house, an RV, to go on vacation. You're all inside. I guess if you're an ultra wealthy person, you could rent an entire cruise ship since they're not going to be used for much anything. You could rent it for your whole family, have an entire cruise ship for yourself. The only problem with that is I took a cruise to Mexico one time and back and found out that during that cruise, they used up one and a half million gallons of diesel fuel. Man, those things are gas hogs. And speaking of that, RVs are also gas hogs. If you're planning on renting an RV, take Scotty's advice. Rent a diesel. The gasoline ones are absolutely horrendous gas mileage. The diesel ones still aren't that great, but they're a lot better. I had a customer who bought a gasoline one, and he was shocked when he found out he was getting four miles a gallon in the thing. Now, you might only get 13 or 15 in a diesel, but it's a heck of a lot better than four miles a gallon. So, I'll take Scotty's advice. If you're going to rent an RV for the summer vacation this year, see if you can get a diesel. You'll save yourself some serious scratch on that, because they use a lot less fuel. Here's good news for those who like to have zippy cars, but don't want to spend an absolute fortune. The other day, one of my customers just bought a 2020 Civic Si. It was a nice zippy little car, I gotta say. If you can't afford the Civic R, you're pushing $40,000. The Civic Si is $25,000. For $15,000 less, you get a pretty decent car, I do have to say. <laughs> I'm too cheap to pay either myself, but it's got some nice looks to it, and it is a zippy little car. And one thing that kind of shocked me was opening and closing the door. It had a big solid door. This wasn't some cheap little Econobox car. It had a nice solid door. It's got a small car, but it's solidly built. It's not as fast, doesn't quarter as well, but like I say, $15,000 difference in price there too. Now, yeah, it's got the full carbon fiber inside and stuff. I don't really go for that stuff, but I mean, if you're into just the looks, go right ahead. And it had that two mode adaptive dampers for the shocking system, so it actually rode pretty well. You could set it up the way you want. It's a pretty cool car in that price range. It did have 205 horsepower, so it had plenty of get up and go. There's no arguing that. It was a fun little car to drive around. So let's face it, if you don't want to spend 40 grand for the Civic R, why not go for the SI? It's a, it's a fun little car to drive. Benjamin Lynch says, Scotty, what do you think of the 2017 VF3 Holden Commodore SSV Redline like your S? S. Oh, there are fun, fast cars to drive. Now, uh, from what I have read, I've never personally worked on them because I live in Texas, not Australia. Those ones that were built in Australia are actually better than the ones built in the United States. You obviously seem to do a good job building cars, and it's a shame. Holden's out of business now. They don't make them anymore. That's all international trade, all that stuff. A lot of these companies like GM and are pulling out of various places that they weren't making enough money, and they thought they couldn't compete. Like there in Australia, they figured we can't compete with these Asian manufacturers, so they shut everything down. But those are fun cars to drive from my Australian friends that had them and drove the heck out of them and modified them and had fun with them. See why the road warrior came from Australia. You know, you guys like driving like that. So <laughs> it's a shame they don't make them anymore, but you know, life goes on. Eat Dirt says, I saw a 2006 Lincoln Zephyr for $4,000. What do you think? I wouldn't buy it. They weren't that great cars. You didn't say what mileage is on it. It's a 14-year-old Lincoln Zephyr. They weren't that popular vehicles. But if it's low mileage, maybe offer them 2,500, see what they go for. They don't have any resale value when they're 14 years old. But let's say the thing's got over 100,000 miles. I wouldn't even buy it then unless it was like 500 bucks or something, and it still ran decently. You can use it as a knock-around car. They weren't the greatest cars, and that's old now. And you didn't mention the mileage, so like I say, if the mileage is too high, I wouldn't even think about buying it. Mo Man says, hey, Scott, if someone buys a Toyota Prius new, what do you think of their decision? Well, if they want a hybrid car, that's probably the best hybrid car to buy. Those things have been around for over 20 years. Toyota knows how to make them. Now, I don't advise people to buy used ones when they got like 180,000 miles because the batteries cost a lot, the generators cost $6,000 to replace on them. They get very, very expensive repairs. But if you don't mind the price and you want a hybrid car, that would be the hybrid car to buy. Me, I'm too cheap to buy anything new. And so I'd never spend that kind of money on a car. Price of one of those 
is almost four times the price of every car I ever bought in my life put together and I've been driving cars for 50 years but they are the best hybrids out there if you want a hybrid go ahead and get one brand new it's gonna last for quite some time Israel 2009 says what do you think of a 2003 Ford F-150 Harley Davidson that was the honorary Harley Davidson F-150 truck it had some Harley stuff on it they had to pay Harley Davidson to use the name of course because Harley's a weird company every time they turn around they want to make money off of something they were good trucks I had a customer with one he was real happy with it not great on a gas mileage but they got a lot of power big old V8 engine in them and it's not turbo or anything so it can last a long time just as with any used vehicle if you're going to buy it pay a guy like me to check it out before trust no one when you buy a used vehicle people lie cheat steal if a guy check it out he says it's good go ahead and buy it they're well made Woe's house giver says I need help in the choice between a Toyota and a Buick they're both the same price <laughs> get the Toyota by far it's 10 times the car it'll last 10 times as long it'll have 10 times less repair I mean if it was a deal where you could get a Buick really cheap and it was low mileage and you don't mind driving it and paying a lot let's go right ahead but if you're talking about their similar car similar mileage and the same price don't even think about buying a Buick that would be stupid quality just you know isn't there and they don't make Buicks anymore anyways they pretty much pulled just about everything out of them did have I believe a station wagon but it was really a rebadged Opal from Europe and they're not sending them over here anymore don't waste your money on that get a Toyota Rob Rob says I got a hundred dollar Sebring convertible with 129,000 miles I'm thinking about fixing up for my son what do you think okay the fact that you got it for a hundred dollars says something Chrysler Sebring convertible was one of the worst cars Chrysler ever made the rag tops rip you paid a hundred bucks for it, it's got 129,000 miles don't put any money into that thing it's not worth it I mean if it needed a break pads and stuff and you're gonna give it to your son and fix the brakes and it still runs you paid a hundred bucks for it what the heck but don't put any serious money in it they're absolute junkers the engine or the transmission will soon go out if it isn't going out right now those were one of the horrendous cars I had customers with them and I oh look at the beautiful convertible and I had one woman who said oh well Scotty you're wrong it's been a great car I said how many miles you got in the car she had 15,000 miles in the car she said well I hope it hasn't broken yet she had a little later didn't drive much so okay 15,000 miles on any car shouldn't break those are horrible cars don't put any kind of serious money like I said if it needs a brake job or something like that go ahead and do it give it to your son but as soon as the engine or the tranny starts to go out just get rid of the stupid thing Rug rubble boy says boy in airplane use Rolls-Royce engines what do you think about that well you know Rolls-Royce has always been a very large manufacturer of jet engines after World War II that was a big thing a long time ago Rolls-Royce the car company separated from Rolls-Royce the aircraft engine company they make top-notch airplane engines I mean I've seen that for years again I always look at the planes I say hey look this one's got Rolls-Royce engines had nothing to do with the Rolls-Royce cars which in turn got bought by BMW and they don't use English engines in them they use V12 BMW engines and even when they were doing Rolls Royce by itself, Rolls Royce was buying the V12 engines from BMW. <laughs> they wouldn't even making their own engines. But they make great airplane engines. You know, the British were really one of the forefront of making jet airplanes. I mean, the Nazis and the Brits were the first ones to really come out with jet engines. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with a British engine for aerospace technology. They're in the jets. They had some good engineers. Billy's gone silly says, I got an 09 Honda Civic. My check engine lights on. It says PO128. The engine isn't overheating and it doesn't stay cold. If it stayed cold too long, that'd mean your thermostat's probably stuck open. You need a thermostat. But you said it isn't, that it goes normal. So the electronic coolant, the ECT1, the number one, there's more than one. You want the number one one. Replace it. Those go bad and they trip that cold. You got more than one sensor. Make sure you get the ECT sensor number one. That's the one that you need to replace. Go to a Honda dealer, tell them you want that. They'll sell it to you. They can tell you where it is. All it does is bolt on and bolt off. Just do it when the engine's cold so the coolant isn't hot and springy in the face. Easy job. Surely I should know better, says. Got 2013 Buick Regal. Both of my cooling fans run high. And this happened after I drove through high water and got everything wet. It didn't die or anything, but now the fans won't turn off all right you went through water the fans won't turn off you shorted something out you want to pray it's a simple thing maybe it shorted out the cooling fan relay they're little rectangular boxes find where the cooling fan relay is remove it 
And if you remove it and the fan stop running, just try another relay. It could be that it shorted a computer out because ultimately those are driven by computer driver circuits that make them go. They operate the relay, but pray it just shorted out the relay. Because that does have a computer relay and sometimes those relays short out. Pray it's that. And that's another reason I tell people don't drive through high water. Modern cars are full of electrical stuff. You get them wet, all kinds of squirrely things can happen. So stay away from water. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.